All right, time for the DAX homework walkthrough. Now I'm gonna go through this very, very quickly. I'll try to include some timestamps in the instructions themselves so that you can jump to specific spots if you get stuck. Um, if you still have trouble following along after I work through these, feel free to reach out and I'll try to help you. So we've got two main buckets of questions. First, we're gonna create a bunch of calculated columns and then we're gonna to shift to report view and create a bunch of measures. So starting with our calculated columns, we're gonna start in the customer lookup table. There we are. And we're gonna add a new column called customer priority. So new column, customer priority. And the way we're defining this is that it's gonna equal priority for anyone who's under 50 and has an income of greater than 100,000, otherwise standard. So now we need to use an if and an and statement here. So I'm gonna start with the if current age is less than 50. And now I didn't use the if and version, I'm gonna use the double ampersand operator so that I can just separate my logical tests kind of in readable order. So if current age is less than 50 and the annual income is greater than 100,000, comment to my result if true, priority, value of false, standard, close it out, press enter, and we'll see that it's added here. If we scroll down, I believe there should be some priority customers. There they are. So that looks good. That's number one. Next up, we're going to move to our product lookup table. Here we go. And add a new column called price point. Add a new column called price point. And basically we're looking at the product price column. If it's greater than 500, price points high. Between 100 and 500, price points mid-range. And then anything under that is low. So rather than using and statements in here for the in-between values, since Power BI, just like Excel, is gonna be reading from left to right, I'm just gonna start with my highest value and then add a second if, and we should be good. So I'll show you what I mean. So if the product price is greater than 500, then the result if true is it's a high price point. And now a little shortcut here, I'm gonna grab that whole statement, copy it, paste it as my second if statement. So if the product isn't high, then what am I testing for? Well, then I'm testing if it's greater than 100. And in that case, it's gonna be mid-range. And the value of false at the very end, I don't have to add a third statement here because if a product isn't greater than 500, and if it isn't also greater than 100, then it's gotta be under 100 bucks. So that's my catch-all low statement. So if the price is over 500, high. If it's less than or equal to 500, but greater than 100, mid-range, otherwise low. So you can enter that in, scroll to the right, low, mid-range, high. These align with the prices, so that looks good as well. Next up, we're moving to our calendar table. We're gonna add a new column called short day. And that short day is essentially gonna extract the three first letters from the day name and capitalize them. So I'll do it in two steps just to show you. I'm gonna start with just the left. So the left of the day name column, I want the three characters. That returns fry, sat, sun, looks good. The only other step is to capitalize by wrapping this whole function in an upper statement. There you go, just like we created the short month column during the lectures. And then last calculated column that we're gonna work with is back in our product lookup table. Here we go. We're gonna add a new column and it's gonna be called SKU category. And the first part of the question is very simple. It's just the left two characters from the product SKU field. So left product SKU, two characters, press enter. This is very similar to what we practiced in the query editor. And that seemed to work just fine. Now the bonus is to modify this to return any number of characters up to that first dash. So basically make that two something more dynamic. If there were five characters or 10 or even a thousand characters, 
before the first dash, they would be returned here in the SKU category field. And to do that little hint, you may need to search long and hard. We're gonna use a search function here. So the number of characters returned is gonna be a function of searching for the dash within that SKU field, right? And we don't need the optional arguments at the end. So I'm gonna close out two parentheses and let's try that. So when we scroll over, you'll see we're very close, but it added a dash at the end. That's because the search found the dash in the third position of the string. Therefore, it fed a three into the character length argument of the left function, where we just want a two. So a little tip between the two parentheses, I'm gonna just literally subtract one from the result of my search function, and that will return everything up to just before it finds the character, the dash, and we're good to go. So those are your calculated columns, all pretty straightforward. You can consult the solution file if you have any questions about those. Next up, we're gonna to jump to report view, and here we're gonna create 10 different measures. Now I've included spot checks so that you can actually play with the matrix visuals and confirm that you're getting the correct results. I'm not gonna create all of the matrix views to produce those spot check values. It would take too long. So I'm gonna show you how to write the measures so that you can make sure you're defining them properly and then make sure that you do confirm those spot check values so that you're good to go moving forward. So first up, we need a new measure named product models. So this is gonna live in our product table. Let's collapse some of these. Right click new measure in the product table and it's called product models. And product models needs to calculate the number of unique model product names. So every time you hear the word unique or distinct, you know you want the distinct count here. So we want the distinct count of model name from the product table. There you go, you should see 119 unique models in this file. Next up, create a measure called all returns that calculates the grand total number of returns regardless of the filter context. So let's drop this one in our returns table since it's obviously return related. We're gonna name it all returns very similar to the all orders measure that we created as well. So because we need to calculate our returns measure, that tells me I need to lead with calculate. Where is it? Total, there it is, total returns measure. And because we don't want it to respond to filter context, that means we need an all function here. And what we wanna do is calculate that based on the entire total returns table. So we're calculating the total returns measure based on the entire AW returns table every single time. Press enter to lock that one in. You should see a total of 1,809 returns and that should map to the grand total no matter how you filter out those values. Next up, we're gonna use what we just created to create a new measure to calculate percent of all returns. So again, we're living in this return table going to name it percent of all returns and that's simply going to equal our original total returns measure divided by our new all returns measure. That's going to give us a ratio, a percentage that we can then use to analyze return rates or return proportions filtered out in different ways. So there you go, that's percent of all returns. Next up, bike returns specifically. Again, New measure in our returns table. I'm going to name it bike returns. And for this one, we're going to use the calculate function because we're calculating a total returns measure like usual. Now, the filter context that we're going to add here is where the product category, category name specifically, equals bikes in quotes. Press enter. Now, when you run your spot check, you should see 427 total bike returns. And next up, we need a measure for total cost. And so total cost, this is actually going to go in my sales table. New measure, total cost. And actually, I'll tell you what, before I do this, rather than starting from scratch, I'm just going to X out of this one I just created. Total cost is going to be an iterator calculation that multiplies order quantities by product cost. And it's gonna work exactly how we created the revenue measure by multiplying order quantities 
by product prices. So rather than reinvent the wheel, let's look at our total revenue measure, which is a sum X, I use that related function. I'm gonna literally grab that whole thing, copy it, and now add a new measure so that I can start with the total revenue and simply change this to total cost. And I still wanna perform a sum X because I want row level calculations. I still want order quantity. This time, instead of pulling the product price from the product table, all I need to do is change that to product cost and we're good to go. So we'll lock that one in as well. And when you pull that into a matrix, you should see a total cost of 14,456,986. Now from here, we can very easily create a measure for total profit. That's as simple as the total revenue minus our total cost. Revenue minus cost equals profit. When you lock that in, you should see a total profit of $10,457,580.86. And now next up, we're gonna start working with some time intelligence. First up is previous month orders. So orders are gonna live in our sales table. I'm gonna name it prev month orders. And basically for previous month, we're gonna start with calculate like all of our time intelligence. The measure we're gonna calculate in this case is total orders. And for previous, we're gonna use the date add function, point to our date field in our calendar lookup. And since we want the previous month, we're gonna do minus one month and the interval is a month interval. So close out two parentheses, we're calculating total orders and the date add allows us to calculate for the previous period and our periods are months. So press enter and we've got previous month orders, good to go. Now, based on that previous month orders, just like we did previous month revenue and a revenue target, we're gonna create another measure called order target that's calculated the same way, which is simply that previous month orders measure times 1.1, since our target here is a 10% lift month over month. So we need 10% over the previous month to define our order target. And we're going to be using this in some of the visuals in the next section of the course. Next up, previous month returns. So same process here. We're just going to add previous month time intelligence function in the returns table. Prev month returns. You know the drill. I could have just copied the other one too, but let's do it from scratch. This time we're calculating the total returns measure using the date add pointing to our calendar date lookup as usual. And then we're gonna say number of intervals, negative one, interval is month, two parentheses, calculating total returns using that date add time intelligence function for the previous month. That one looks good. And now our final measure that we need to create is a 90 day rolling profit. And I'm gonna put profit here in my sales table, new measure, 90 day, rolling profit, which creates basically a running total with a time frame of 90 days. And for this one, as always, we we'll start with calculate. And then this time, total profit is the measure that we're evaluating. And we're gonna use the dates in period option here. Point to our calendar lookup date field. And then the next component, this is the only one that has this fourth argument here, the start date. And for that one, we're gonna use the max of our calendar lookup date, just like we practiced in the demos. And then the number of intervals, in this case, 90 intervals, and our interval period is a day, so minus 90 days. Close out two parentheses, press enter, and you are good to go. So I know that was a fast and furious run through of all those measures, Make sure that you play with the matrix visuals, pull these in and out, confirm the spot check values in the homework file, because we're gonna be using a lot of these measures in the data viz section coming up next. So with that, you've officially wrapped the DAX section. 
So get excited because now we're going to start building some incredible reports and dashboards.